Jason Condor, quarterback for the state. Coming to you now in mid-quality audio. Brought to you in part by FNS Delivers. From your Vikings game day headquarters, right Mandarin at the Eden Prairie Center. It's football talk like you've never heard before. Get ready for America's favorite Minnesota Vikings podcast. With your hosts, Sticky. I really hated what he did. I hope he starts on fire. And Bun. You have got naked and are standing right in front of me and are doing thrust. It's the Sticky Bun's Fun Time Happy Football Program. Ladies and gentlemen, Sticky and Bun. And here we are in the Everything is Terrible Forever season. Do, 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 um, Before we get started, I just want to know, do you have any positives for the Vikings? I want to hear something positive about this team that I love <laughs> and I'm starting to regret having been born in the state where I just came to this team by default because this week has been terrible. This weekend is going to be terrible. This is a terrible season. Things are terrible. What was the status you put for our Facebook? Everything is terrible forever. And what was the comment I had? You had that you didn't um, agree. Sticky does not support the assertions of the bun on that subject. You want to know something positive? Sure. Literally, this is extremely positive. Okay. Have you seen the pictures of how well they dress getting off that plane? Like when they arrive, not when they get back, because they're they're probably this downtrodden. Is what we're but having to reach for, dude. Oh. Seriously, those suits are so sweet. It makes me want to go buy them. I'm not gonna lie. At literally everyone, Andrew Sandejo, his suits, and you pair those with the facial hair of Harry the Hitman. My God, you would have a god amongst men. I would have sex with him. You say that about <laughs> far too many guys that we talk about on. Maybe I'm I love men. Maybe you do. Maybe I'm thinking of penises when I look at vaginas. That's a, not a, a a real statement. That was just make believe talk with you. I really have to get your wife to listen to this podcast sometime. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's a negative. That will never happen. You could pay her, and I'm pretty sure she wouldn't. So that's what we have for positive. Well, I mean, there are other positives, too. Like, people are still alive. They're healthy. (laughs) (laughs) There are... (laughs) Oh, this is just emphasizing how bad of a week this has been. There continues to be and will be this weekend. You know, okay, okay, okay. Let's, Let's be realistic, okay? What happened is what happens to all fan bases, no matter where they are in the season... It's complete overreaction. So when they did some good things, the Atlanta game, it was complete overreaction. Going into the season, (laughs) we saw nothing but undefeated preseason. We also had hopes and dreams about candies and nuts and fingers and butts. and (laughs) Those were your dreams. (laughs) And we had complete overreaction. All on the positive. We thought we were going to win 10 or 11 games. We No, you thought that. You were very close. I said 8 and 8 and I thought it would be closer it would be 7 and 9 before 8 and 8. Uh we had to we have to go back and roll back the dat. I definitely went with 8 and 8. I disagree with that statement. You did not say that. You were much more positive, which no. freak cuz it freaked me out. I didn't know what to do. I had sleepless nights. I touched myself a little too much because I didn't know what to do with that information. So you thought about me and my predictions, and you touched yourself. Well, that's not the first time I've thought of that, okay? Let's this, just put that out on the table. Not only has this week gone terrible, this podcast is just revealing terrible, <laughs> terrible things. Why do you think every bet I make with you is trying to get you naked? <laughs> I try not to think about that. Uh, well, you just did. You know, I have a positive. I didn't go watch it with your friend. That is not a positive. We had such a blast, and we didn't talk working out once. Well, Paul and I did later after everyone left. Cause I, I but stayed your friend like, is a Bears fan, right? No. I thought that's what is the thing. No, he hates the Bears. Oh, okay. That was the thing. He's He grew up in Maryland as a diehard Viking fan. He went to away games. 
So, All right. Yeah, you're a fool. Okay. And he had, I don't know, it was kind of nice just having that here so once it was over I could do something else. <laughs> I, I went on the treadmill for a while. Did you now? Yep. Uh, um, I worked out prior to it. Yeah, that was a that was a terrible game, and it was terrible in so many facets. Because here's the thing: I was worried. I think last week I predicted the Bears would win. Cause you I did. I thought that what would happen was after those two terrible games they had, mm-hmm. they would have a bounce back game where they mm-hmm. would play really well, really inspired. Mm-hmm. I was kind of. I thought it was a possibility that they would, you know, just give up on the season and the Vikes would trounce them. Mm-hmm. What I didn't expect was the Bears would look terrible, especially early on, not look inspired, play inspired football, and they would still trounce us. Because they made a lot of stupid, stupid mistakes. Just boneheaded penalties that Matt, um, that Cutler touching the official thing. Um, they played extremely conservatively right before half, which didn't make any sense to me, and I know the announcers were also going off on it. Um, Jared Allen only ended up with one sack, but especially in the first half was very disruptive. I kind of expected that, though. Of course you did. That that was his Super Bowl. He ain't getting to one this year, so that was his Super Bowl. You can no longer say he's never won a game at <laughs> Chicago. At Soldier Field. Yeah. That is true. His first win at Soldier Field came against his old team. Yep. Um, I don't know. I guess I can't get too down on Josh Robinson because that's always what their wide receivers were supposed to do. Yeah. He, he, I can't complain about his performance as much as I think some people have because, look, it was always going to happen that way. I kind of question why they didn't give him more help, honestly, after it became clear that the Bears were targeting him. Um, but it was disappointing to see that our defensive line did not have a good day against a pretty questionable offensive line. Barr did not do anything spectacular. Um, and then that offense is just painful to watch. And I was really, I knew we would have, I knew Bridgewater would throw some dumb interceptions at various times. I knew he'd occasionally miss some guys, but I was hoping that in general, he would look like an NFL quarterback because we haven't had a guy that's looked like that. And very few games has he looked like an NFL quarterback, at least not for four quarters. He has moments, and I'm excited to see if he can get those moments to be more consistent. But other than the Atlanta game, and really the Atlanta game was just because um, our running game was going nuts that entire game, um, he just he hasn't looked like an NFL quarterback. Our offense is just brutal. And I'm tired of watching a really brutal offense. No. Is that it? Yep. I, I was literally bored out of my mind with uh, with your statements. Only because I share them. Oh. So, not all of them, but let's just be honest. Um... I actually read a really nice article that I'm, I'm going to send to you. I didn't want to send to you beforehand. So I didn't want you to read it and agree. Um, it was that the Vikings played poorly. The players played poorly, but the coaching was worse. See, I mentioned earlier the questionable use of not giving Josh Robinson more help. Um, North Turner has not impressed me this year. Now... Maybe you can say that's because the offensive line has played worse than I think anyone expected it to, certainly worse than I expected it to, and that kind of handcuffed him. But overall, I have not been overly impressed with North Turner, which is kind of sad. So, okay, okay. So I I have, by and large, been very on the coaching staff as a positive. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they've shown us things that we've, never seen in our lifetime with the Vikings. Adjustments, in-game adjustments, not just at halftime, like like literally within drives. Um, but 
the so I think I actually think that the bye week hurt us, and having the bye week and the players suck hurt the coaching staff because they didn't suck. It's how they sucked. Let's start with the defense. Okay. Anthony Barr was horrendous. That was his worst game as a professional. Um, he missed, uh, on record, five tackles. Now, you don't miss five tackles in a game. Um, there's actually a stat. Uh, let me look it up. Um, see if I can do it quickly. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Offense. Nope. Defense. Scroll down. Uh, come on. It was fantastic. It really was, I promise you. But just based on how many tackles he missed and how rare that is for him, or rare in general that a guy is allowed to miss that many tackles. Okay. Uh, even though Barr was not a sieve in coverage... He did nothing as a rusher and was a giant liability against the run. He missed five tackles overall, an astonishing total. For context, five missed tackles would be as many as the average linebacker had all year. Yeah. He matched a year's total for the average linebacker in one game. Now, there has some heard some rumblings. He's a kid who's probably, you know, he's got a lot to learn, and kids make dumb decisions. I made a bloatload of dumb decisions, like, for years after college. And this was after I took two years off going into college. I was even older and dumber. So, I'm not calling him stupid by any means, because he's picked up a lot of Zimmers off defense, which is complicated. Um, there's been some rumblings that maybe he took, he was too carefree during his bye week that he just took time off which that's fine but when you take that time off sometimes it's hard to get back into work now see all the reports before the game though were zimmer being super impressed with how everyone looked during practice sure yeah but but there's a difference right you're not full contact i mean you you are hitting people but you're not hitting them the same way as you do in games your killer instinct dies a little bit um, and you have to ramp yourself up for that, which is uh, obviously the Bears did that to some degree. They needed motivation in the game to get that going 100% full speed. Um, and it, that happens. Normally, the bye week is used to to get healthy. But they did also get extra time off because they won two weeks in a row, which is what he said. If you do this, you'll get extra time off besides the normal bye week time off. Um, and I think that, I think they deserved it, but they are a very young team and that's hard to overcome sometimes when you're a kid. Um, but the, there were some stars on defense, oddly enough. There are three. Okay. Fortunately, there are 11 guys in the field. There were three. I actually, you know, I, I would say three and a half. I wouldn't call the, the fourth person a star. Xavier Rhodes is my half. I don't think he was a star. But he wasn't being burned. In fact, they he, avoided him. He was not being. Yes, he was actually only targeted four times. He did give up three receptions on those four, but uh, no one burnt him. He didn't give up any touchdowns, and uh, th- those he set the edge on that fourth and one. Yes, and those wide receivers are tough. Yeah, the fact that they have only so many wins is is astonishing because Brandon Marshall is like the prototypical. I'm going to beat the snot out of you as a wide receiver. He is Anquan Bolden on steroids. Um, he probably doesn't take real steroids. I don't really know. Um, but he is, he's, he's got the, the, the size. He's got the height. He's got some speed. He's probably a little bit slower, and now he's getting older. He's got great hands, and he uses his body like a tight end with leverage and power. Alshon Jeffrey... Um, actually, back to Brandon Marshall. I heard someone tell me that Brandon Marshall is a bit like Randy Moss, minus the speed, add power. Which is close. He catches nearly anything around him. Um, he's not a gazelle like Randy. Randy would streak down the field and there's nothing you could do. 
You just needed an extra defender at the goal line to maybe stop him. Um, and Brandon can do things that Randy can't. Randy was never going to bowl through somebody. No. He was small. Um, Brandon Marshall bowls through people. Um, now, obviously, Randy has other qualities that set him above everyone else in the universe. So it's a, it's a s- slight comparison. And Elshon Jeffrey is very much like Brandon Marshall, but he's got that speed. Um, he's got he's probably not as, as powerful as Marshall, but he's not bad. He had 230 some yards against us last year in one game. So those wide receivers are built to beat our our current defensive backs. Xavier Rhodes is the only one who has size. Captain Munderland is diminutive, and Josh Robinson. As much as he was in position, he can't compete with those. Yeah. And Zimmer even talked about it going into it that he can't compete with the height. So he worked on technique on you know getting your hand in there, trying to rip the ball out before it becomes a catch, things like that, which is fantastic. But Alshon and Brandon Marshall are good about sticking that ball in those those mitts and not letting go. Yeah. Um, the three stars. So back to that. Uh, Sharif Floyd, Everson Griffin, um, and Harrison Smith. Um, Harrison Smith never got burned over the top. He never let things happen to his side. Maybe a completion, but certainly not large chunks of yardage. Um, and obviously had an interception. Um, so, uh, fabulous game. But that's what we expect from him. So, he doesn't get a game ball for that. Sharif Floyd was disruptive up the middle. He was it was difficult to find. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. I, I saw him be disruptive. Uh, we didn't get the sacks or even the hits on um, Cutler. I would have liked to see that. He did have some nice stops on Forte. But yes, yes. But th- the metric came out that Cutler's throws. He was doing three step drops and and shoot two steps drops and shoot. He literally had his second fastest release time of the entire season. So he knew that he was going to get murdered and was trying to get the ball out as fast as possible. And when you have Forte, that also assists you. Um, And then Everson Griffin, boy, oh boy. Uh, I feel like they treated him like Jared Allen used to be treated with us because he was so close so often. But he was getting chipped. He was getting pushed around, and he never gave up. That's fantastic. Now, if only... Brian Robinson was close. He was close. He had a lot of nice hurries. He couldn't close. He looked really bad when he was tripped by the tight end, and it was on the ground and, and gave up what you classify, and the announcers classify as the perfect throw ever in history. Um, didn't say that, but it was a good throw. And moving on, and uh, I do wish Linval Joseph, I think, was fine. Uh, you never hear his name, which is great. That means he's taking on two blockers. That also means that your linebacker sucked balls. Because if he's taking on two blockers, which is his job, that means those gaps are open, which means our linebackers get through. And since they never got through, they sucked. Uh, Chad Greenway was up and down. Uh, apparently, alignments were off. It, we've already talked about Anthony Barr being worse than the pros. Um, who's uh, Jasper Brinkley? Is he even on the team anymore? He's he's literally playing like 10% of the snaps now. We've basically said, you're worthless. Uh, now, we have played more passing teams. He's not in there. Nickel, fine. Um, he was bad. And Robert Blanton was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, he was nowhere. Two touchdowns, he did not provide support like he was supposed to. You can't do that. You can't do that. So, we're going to get to the putrid offense in a bit. Okay. Um, the the other problem you have is you, you start fast. You did a good job. And, yes, I know that the touchdown was set up by a fake punt, but that does get get involved in this. I heard that was our first fake punt attempt since 2004. Now, that sounds um, about right. No, that can... Well, punt maybe. 
Not first fake. It could be first fake punt. I thought it was 2004. Maybe I read the... If it Well, if it was I a punt, that wrong. could be. Because Brad Childress had a fake field goal. Okay. That got us down to the one, I think. Because we threw it to a tight end, and he just did not know how to run fast. Um, who was that? doesn't matter. Um, uh, the When you go up by 10, you're really only one play away from being only up by three. And they have a potent offense. There's a reason why I have two of those offensive members on my fantasy football team that has a ridiculous scoring feature. Because I know they'll get me points every week. And they did. Uh, sorry about your loss. Um, but you got to a point, when you scored that touchdown, they started to turn. The, the, the crowd wanted to kill somebody. I really was in favor of them just storming the field and killing Cutler on the, on the field themselves. Um, and really... The Bears' defense or offense wasn't hitting on cylinders. See, it ended. I mean, at that point, yes, correct. Um, now okay. you have two, two third downs where you're in position to put them out, where it's going to be a fourth, fourth down. Both times you miss tackles, they go down the field. What happens? They score two. Times. No, you don't think they deserve credit for that when you say your their offense wasn't firing. I mean, they got themselves in third and long and constantly bailed themselves out of it. And but it just killed me to see, watch. See, normally I agree that you need to give the other side props, but they didn't out execute us. We were in position to stop them. Breaking so we, tackles isn't. No, it wasn't breaking tackles because I know. I, we have we've had Adrian Peterson, which we're going to talk about on our team. We know what breaking tackles look like. We have Matt Asiata. We know what broken tackles don't look like. These were tackles where it's I have one arm out, and there isn't a fucking running back in the league that's going to get stopped by it. Maybe Matt Asiata. Um, Matt Asiata gets stopped. Maybe he might he might fall forward, but he's not. These were the poorest attempts I've seen since Leslie Frazier. So long ago, um, I know it's just last year. <laughs> I just love the expressions you have. If you so, even Zimmer said in his press conference, you stop him there, and then they start thinking, is our game plan good enough, or do we need to change things? Even if it's actually working, they start questioning it. Instead, what happens is you don't adapt as a defense. Because you were in position, but you didn't stop it, and you didn't adjust it because you're not tackling well. So the players playing poorly actually hurt the coaching staff because it, it was like, well, you're in. We have the right game plan, but we can't really adjust for you sucking balls. It also starts to give um, a team the, the awesome momentum. And starts to get them rolling a bit. And now they think they can beat you. And then they do. Now, having said that, and we played poorly, you did. You were in position to win that game or tie it. You were in position. The last couple drives, you drove down the field. Now, the, the last drive is we're going to talk about that with the offense being putrid. Um, but you did. So it's not like you couldn't have won the game, even playing as horrible as you did. But the coaches did not assist at all. Let's talk about the offense. Okay. How do you feel about the offense again? It's just painful to watch. I'm so sick of watching this <laughs> offense be so bad. You, I've never seen you this lethargic. Either it's because it's really late at night and you're past your bedtime, you're wearing a blanket skirt, or because you actually feel this way. Maybe all three. Maybe uh, a bit. Um. Teddy looks like an NFL quarterback. Your statement that he doesn't... Now you're overreacting in the opposite direction, which is normally what you do. This this is what happens when you have... When you throw a kid out there and you don't protect him... Oh, so now it's because he's a kid. Because I thought our 
rule was NFL quarterback, and you don't get a curve on that. I mean, you if we're going to say judging his progress, sure, you get a curve. But if we're going to say whether or not he's playing well as an NFL quarterback, whether or not the offense is putrid, you don't get that curve. No, but okay, but here's the thing. Do you remember... Oh, thank heaven for number seven. See, that wasn't an NFL quarterback either. He did start for an NFL team, so that classifies as an okay, NFL quarterback. so did Joe Webb. <laughs> Who you think is amazing. He does amazing <laughs> things, but he's fun. <laughs> he never stops smiling. He's always playing street ball out there because he doesn't know how to actually run an offense. Um, Christian Ponder, we know what terrible quarterback he looks like. Yes, we do. Christian Ponder at no point showed signs of life. He looked like I look like in flag football. A guy is rushing with me. He may be 15 yards away still and coming at me. I panic and I throw the ball. <laughs> he happens to be a better runner than me, so he'll run the ball instead of panicking and throwing it. Um, Teddy, doesn't, Teddy does some things that are boneheaded and you want to shoot yourself. But he also shows a lot of things that you didn't see in Christian. And that you haven't seen in a while. Sometimes, but not often enough. We're seeing the checkdowns for two yards on third and five, and I'm so tired of seeing those. But you have to think. And I, Andrew I, Kramer said he was not seeing open guys down the field sometimes. Well, okay, you, yeah, so the, you you have a couple problems. Um, and uh, your hero and idol, Ben Lieber, talked about it. That... Yes, you don't want to see those checkdowns. They obviously weren't calling them for a two-yard dump off when you need five. You know, they, 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 that just wasn't happen. But you have choices you have to start making in the progression tree. And I do think that Teddy didn't make some of those progressions. He, he bailed on them a little too quickly. And we'll talk about why. But if, if you... If you are not getting the time, let's go back further. North Turner, his specialty is the Air Coriel offensive scheme, which is deep routes, um, go concepts. He wants to throw the ball. He was fantastic at it with Phil Rivers and Vincent Jackson in San Diego. He had, he had three parts to an offense that were amazing. A quarterback... A big wide receiver who could just go up and get it, no matter where it was chucked, and a scat back who could make amazing dance moves when you dumped it off to him in Darren Sproles. What does he have with the Vikings? He's got Teddy, who is a quarterback and can throw those balls. We'll talk about Teddy's shortcomings. He has Jarek McKinnon, who who can do more than Sproles, I think, uh, but he's I saw I saw a, a picture where he cut. This is insane. His he was at a forty five degree angle to the ground. He didn't go down. How the f do you do that? And I'm not talking like leaning over. He was to the side. So his he was basically planted in the ground at a forty five degree angle and went upfield. That's I don't know how that's possible. So he can do all the scat back stuff. Plus, he could probably be kind of a number one, not a feature number one, but definitely if if you're doing running back midi, he's getting the bulk. Um, but you don't have that big wide receiver you can just chuck it up to. You don't. Now, do we know that because we haven't seen him chuck it up in a place that is catchable very often? Because against Tampa Bay, we saw Patterson make some pretty nice catches along the sidelines where he went up and caught the ball. I, sure. Patterson sure. has his issues. Yes. Yes. Has running routes issues. But we have not seen many jump ball situations. We've seen some goes that have not connected. Yes. We have not seen the jump balls that Correct. you're talking about. Now, you certainly want Patterson to be that guy. He he has the skill set to be that guy, as well as provide a new dimension that a Vincent Jackson can't do. Um, I think we all know that. But did you notice, who were your starting wide receivers? Did you look at that? I did not. It was number 15? Jennings. Number 17? 
Right. Not Patterson. He's been demoted. And in his press conference, they asked Zimmer about it. He took like a two-minute pause before answering. (laughs) And he said, I think Cordero is going to be a great player. But this is his third new offense in three years. And sometimes players take longer to figure it out. That's not his fault. It's just a learning curve. We can't expect 10 games in that he can figure this new system out when he spent every year prior to this cramming a new system in his brain. And he only played one year at Division I football, and then he went to the NFL. So he's never had to study it like this. We have to give him time, and we'll give him time. That doesn't help you. Um, I'm going to give 75% of the fault on those jump balls to Teddy Bridgewater, my quarterback. Teddy's problem is he he's not really made for North Turner offense. And That's air, a concerning statement. It, it, it is a little bit. He can be a great quarterback in North Turner's offense. But um, an Aaron Rodgers, a Drew Brees, a, certainly a Brett Favre, those are quarterbacks who are made for a uh, North Turner offense. A Jay Cutler. A Jay Cutler. Absolutely. Jay Cutler is made for North Turner. They could get married and have beautiful children. Well, I suppose you'd, you'd need eggs at some point in there. Um, he has a beautiful wife already, and they... On the league, they have the Cutler baby. Uh huh. We're going to move on now. Um, the problem is that, and why Teddy doesn't fit now, that doesn't mean he can't fit. He's He does have the, the tools to succeed at it, is that he's too specific. He, if you put him, I'm not even joking, he would probably be one of the best quarterbacks. In the league, he'd be top 10 for sure if you put him in a West Coast offense because he's all about precision and timing. Zimmer even released information that now on the sideline when they're not showing Teddy Bridgewater just sitting there chilling out, he's going over to the wide receivers and telling them they're running the wrong routes. And he's pointing out, you need to do this. Hmm. This is where it's going. So they're performing poorly for him. But part of that, those jump balls is basically, I trust you, I'm just going to chuck it. Your job is to get it. But if you're trying to be too precise, that doesn't work. You can't be precise. It's fucking 50 yards downfield. You have no idea where that's going to actually go. He's too robotic. He is thinking... The problem is, he's not really thinking about what should he do. He's trying to pinpoint accuracy on every goddamn throw. And it's we're starting to see it where they ha- literally have to be like, just play football. Now, why can he succeed and why does he look like an NFL quarterback? Two-minute drills. He is amazing at two-minute drills. When's the last time you saw him take a two-minute drill and not march down the field with relative ease, with the same cast of characters he's failing at beforehand? Um, how far were they? Two minute drill. Wasn't it around the forty? I mean, that's not a. You mean for long... against Chicago? Yeah, I don't remember where they started, but every other game before that, he's doing fantastic. He's mm. in position where he has to tie the game or win the game, and he's going down the field. That's the reason he's succeeding there is because it's up tempo. It's I, I, we don't have time to think about this, guys. We're just going to play. And he's fantastic. You need to get them to figure out how to do that the rest of the game and stop analyzing it a bit. Now, I would say Christian Ponder thinks too much. I was about to say, I'm hearing some things I used to hear with but, Ponder, too, and it makes me But sad. Christian never ran a two-minute offense where I was like, I love you. Christian looked at me and I said, I love you. But he never ran an offense where I said, I love you. He he played against Green Bay and got us into the playoffs where I said, I love this team. 
I will still marry you, Christian, because you're beautiful. But that's the difference. Teddy Bridgewater looks like Aaron Rodgers. He looks like Tom Brady. He looks like an NFL quarterback who's guiding his offense down the field. And he's he's figuring out what he's going to do as it happens. That takes time. I I was we were I was talking during the game with my friend Paul and we chatted about no one remembers Aaron Rodgers looked terrible when he first came out. He won 5 games. 5. Daddy's at what? 4. He won 5 games. Yes, he didn't start the year. So one win doesn't count. So he's three wins. Get off my back. He'll win another 7 this year. Um I know we don't have 7 left. Uh I'm counting the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not really. Why are you I'm causing really. more pain? I'm not really. But he, I remember a game against Tennessee that I watched on on the, on the TV when he was throwing interceptions in the end zone, stand games. Nobody remembers that. What do they remember? How crazy good he is right now. How good he was last year, but they don't remember how he sucked. And. A lot of us don't remember how Brett Favre sucked. Well, I remember because I kind of enjoyed it. Um, and now we remember Drew Brees sucking because he sucks now. Kind of. Um, but remember, Drew Brees, they drafted Philip Rivers. Think about that. Think about Drew Brees wins the Super Bowl with the Saints. And the, the team he was on drafted another quarterback to replace him. That's dumb. That's insane. Really, the only guys who don't go through that are Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning. That's it. That's basically it. Right? What other quarterback? Tom Brady and Tom Brady. But Tom Brady has piss and vinegar in his veins. He told... he. I remember a uh, great story. He told Robert Kraft on <laughs> the first day of practice, because he's a six-rounder, so he doesn't get to fly to Foxborough. He doesn't get to meet the owner until you know camp starts. And he goes up, shakes his hand, and says... I will not let you down. You're going to thank God that you drafted me, and I know the names of every single quarterback drafted ahead of me. That's, I've heard that story. That's piss and vinegar. Yeah. He's out to murder you. And I even read a sweet article where they he goes to bed at 8.30 every night because he has nothing to live for except for football. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does have a beautiful wife and children, so he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have anything. Um. But you don't have you don't you really don't have the skill set to win with North Turner's offense, and he is adapting some. The Bears coaching game is horrific because how many your favorite player on the on the offense is who? My favorite, Jarek McKinnon. Okay, that's an easy answer. Get out of depression mode, okay? Okay. Focus. I know you love Greg Jennings, but he's done nothing for your fantasy team. He really hasn't. So you hate life. Um, Jarek McKinnon, how many uh, how many sna- how many touches did he have in the second half? Four. Nope. Zero. Closer. One. One. How many touches did he have in the first half? Eleven. Nope. Seven. Seven. Jarek McKinnon. So you you had Aziata ran once. You had Felton run twice. So 11 times you ran with backs. Okay, that's where I was getting 11 from. That's insane. That's stupid. Against a team who couldn't stop anybody. They were stopping us, but I, I agree. You shouldn't have given up on it so quickly. Absolutely. But they clearly came in. I mean, Jared Allen said after the game, the plan was to put the ball in Teddy Bridgewater's hands. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I I literally looked at that and said, Jared, you're stupid. <laughs> you're stupid. Because it didn't work at all. That's not why we lost the game. Teddy is not why we lost the game. Defense and coaching is why we lost the game. We scored 13 points against a team that had the worst scoring defense in the Absolutely. Coaching, you ran the ball 3 times in the second half. Why? Was the game that far out of reach? No. Jerick McKinnon actually had yardage in the first half and then you decided, "Oh, that wasn't we're not looking for that kind of yardage. Go sit down, young pup." 
stupid. And out of the three you did in the second half, <laughs> apparently it was really split carries. Because one McKinnon, one Asiata, one Felton. That's the dumbest coaching decision I've ever seen in my life. Unless you decided to start Asiata. Then you might have surpassed this. Um, so you, you completely abandoned the run without it being necessary at all. You threw nonstop. And you kept doing five-step drops. When your line wasn't blocking, those deep routes can't they don't have time to materialize materialize because the pressure's coming so he's got a check down and now you you're failing yourself where does that come from coaching and your defense the majority of your defense played like amateur hour and you allowed them to score whenever they want you allowed them to control the the ball yeah they had the ball for almost 40 minutes that's two thirds of the game. Yeah, we had trouble on third downs. Trouble on every down. The coaching was horrific. All right, that's more time than I wanted to spend on that game. That game was terrible. It Do was. we want to talk about the other terrible news just briefly because we have to mention it? We're under obligation. Goodbye, intern. Do you want to say anything to the people? Go away. Bye, Luke. Love you. Breaking news. Oh, that's what that noise was? Breaking news as of like, I don't know, 14 hours ago. <laughs> so, Do you like, would you like to start or do you want me to start? I'm just... I was hopeful that we'd get to see Adrian Peterson around. some this year. I was fine with something of... A couple more game suspension. I wasn't thinking it would be the rest of the year. I don't understand then what benefit he had for or agreeing to go on the exempt list. Quite frankly, I don't understand why Greg Hardy isn't screaming bloody murder to say, get me off this list if it's not going to help me any. Honestly, that was the story I was waiting for all day, that the Union was saying Greg Hardy wants off this list and you have to make a decision now on what you're going to actually do with him because um, there is apparently no benefit to going on that list. Apparently not. Um, Literally zero benefit other than you get a paycheck. Which is a pretty big benefit, but that's not what they're going for. No, it is not. Um, especially not AP who's hoping to set... NFL career records, which I don't think is going to happen anymore. The outside shot he had at that kind of diminished this year. Um, But no, we get no AP. I kind of regret buying season tickets. Wow. Wow. That was deep. Are you mentally handicapped at this point? Just depressed. Okay, so you don't really... You don't really feel that way you just want to commit suicide right now so you just kind of hate everything i don't know this season has not been as much fun as i hoped and a big part of that is i haven't gotten to watch adrian peterson we go to games together you're not having fun with me i bought warmer clothes today i really like that you had to think about that I asked you that question, and you could have just said yes, but you had to think about it, and your only response was, I bought warmer clothes. I bought warmer clothes. I bought a, I bought a shirt today. It made me feel great. <laughs> a shirt I can't wear to the games. It was a button down. It was red. I love red. Okay. Not as much as I have purple. Um, I'm going to go on a huge rant. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about? No. Here's the deal. And I talked about this with several of my friends today. Literally all of them because I only have like seven. Um, <laughs> you are the seventh. Excellent. Seventh son from the seventh house. You will need to be sacrificed for the pharaoh. Um, I, I think... We need to separate in this conversation the acts from which the suspension or the problems arised, so what he did to the kid, and what has happened after. 
Those are two separate things for me. I, I'm not going to get into, is that a bad thing to do to kids? How do I feel about that? Should Adrian Peterson be hanged by his balls for doing that? Those are all conversations for another day and not on the podcast. What I am going to talk about is what happens to Adrian Peterson go, from that moment and going forward. Adrian Peterson was well within his right when this happened to play it out and say, I'm fucking playing. There's no verdict. There's no jail time. I have been a crazy good player for you guys. I have done publicity nonstop for you, the Vikings and the NFL. I've been a poster child, even though I have several poster children. I I have done numerous great things for you, including um, charity work. I am a star. So he could have said, I'm a star, I'm going to play, and we'll see how this works. Because I can go post bail in Texas, and I'll be back the next day, which is exactly what happened. Um, obviously, the PR hit was a nightmare, especially the week after Ray Rice. That's the problem. Ray Rice is the problem. Well, Roger Goodell's belief on what happened in the Ray Rice situation is the problem. Ray Rice is not the problem. But, and the Vikings, everyone looks stupid as fuck. The Vikings did a great job of deactivating him immediately, did a really dumb job of bringing him back immediately, and if the Vikings the Vikings had complete control, if they just sent him away for a couple weeks, none of this effort, effing ever happens. But we just keep getting dumber and dumber. So, everyone wants AP to go away. Legally, he doesn't have to. And he's not going to just not show up to work, right? So, Roger Goodell says, we do have an exempt list. You should think about it. But the only way that happens is is if Adrian Peterson agrees to it. So, they they come up with this contract, and it says, "I'll, I'll agree to go on this. You're going to pay me once the law is is resolute, once the outcome is done, then I'll be taken off the list. Great. Adrian Peterson basically said to the NFL, I got your back. I'll go away. Okay, and that way I won't be a problem. You won't have to worry about me. I'll solve my problems. And you get to look good from a PR standpoint that you're letting me focus on my problems. Let's be honest. There is nothing Adrian Peterson focused on while being away except for working out. Nothing. He had a fabulous attorney who he paid probably half his salary to, who did all the work. He did nothing. It, he did not have to focus on things. Maybe he went to counseling. I have been to counseling for other things in my past. That's, what, once a week? Maybe, maybe because he's got nothing else going on in his life, he goes a couple times a week. Really, how many fucking hours in a day? He's not going to go to counseling every hour. That's insane. So he did nothing. Except work out hungrier than ever to go back and play. Which is great. I love that mentality. That's what I want from Adrian Peterson. So, this is where the NFL becomes the dumbest organization I have ever heard of in my life. In fact... I kind of wish I didn't have season tickets. I have never uttered that word in my life. Well, it's multiple words, but you know. That phrase. Yes. And it's not because I don't like the Vikings, and it's not because I don't support the Vikings. It's because part of that money goes to the NFL. And as a CEO, as a business owner, they made so many stupid-ass decisions that I don't want to give you my money. You, You took this drug it through the ground and did everything possible wrong to, to, to flex muscle. A good business, when faced with adversity or a situation, they do all they can to gather information so that when they are forced to make a decision, they can make it swiftly and accurately. Because you never know what's going to happen. Case in point, we had a situation at my company where one of our main employees was no longer able to work the the 
way he was supposed to work when hired. So we had to gather all the information we could about time frame. Is this going to be rectified? Is it going to change? How's this going to work? And then myself and my team put together a strategy based on a slew of different answers. So we knew at any point, whenever we got an answer, we just opened that door and we have the solution. We're already set. So no matter when that happens, we can pivot piece of cake because we don't know when that's going to happen. Now, part of doing that is you sometimes find out new information along the process, which eliminates some of those options as well as enhances others and maybe gives you doors you didn't know existed, which is exactly what happened in our case. But you can't fully process that unless you already have the foundation built. Roger Goodell is an idiot. He may be a fantastic lawyer, but it's only because he has a team of people assisting him. He, If I was an NFL owner, he's effing fired. Because, and I think he's done a lot of good things. I like the new personal conduct policy. I like some of the, the, the things he's doing to get out to public and to make the brand good. I think he's doing a fabulous job until he takes the entire integrity of the brand and just runs the F over it with every dump truck he's got and just pees on it on the side of the road. Because, so he had 10 weeks. He had 10 weeks. He didn't analyze anything. No new information came out on on AP. Everything was extremely public. We saw the pictures. Adrian Peterson gave he gave a, a basically a press conference outside his house while grabbing a tree branch and showing what it was like to the local paper. He had all that stuff. He didn't look at any of it. He said, "Oh, you're going away. Well, this won't be this won't be adjusted for the season. I'll have plenty of time in the off season to relook at it when I've got apparently time because I guess he has no time at this moment. And yes, he's got a trial against Ray Rice because of a similar situation. Um, obviously, a different situation for the player, but similar problems. I guess that's too much. Well, guess what." CEOs who run big companies have those problems every second of every day. You wake up with those problems. You go to sleep with those problems. The Justice Department of the United States, they deal with those things almost on a minute-by-minute basis. So it's not like you're some random individual who never gets to deal with these things. That's what you're hired for, to make those decisions, to handle those problems. So... He's trying, he spends the 10 weeks trying to to get over the big problem of how he handled Ray Rice. I totally understand from the standpoint of you gave him two games because he'd never been a problem in the past and that's it. Okay, I get it. I understand that he probably should have maybe gotten more because he punched a woman and knocked her out and drug her out of an elevator. But, you know... People people complain about lots of things, so I was fine with it. But once the video came out, <laughs> you're effed. <laughs> uh, I hope Roger took a nice, long, hot shower that day because it, it was he was not showering for a while after. Um, you're gonna hit take a PR hit again. He made a poor decision, and in, instead of slowly identifying the new issues taking into account, speaking to people. Instead of doing that, he willy-nilly suspended him indefinitely. Come on. Come on. Really? Really? You're just going to... Now you're just going to change everything because you realize that Ray Rice is now suing the Roger Goodell and the NFL because through the Players Association because he added a second suspension without any new information, any new crime. That's ridiculous. You can't... That's against the CBA. So, and obviously the public wants to kill Roger Goodell because you gave a two-game suspension over the offseason when you have a lot of time to gather info on a guy who punched a woman and drug her out unconscious of an elevator. So Roger puts on his Hulk Hogan mustache, breaks out his guns, and says, I'm going to be tough, indefinite suspension. And the Players Association is like, 
please, Grandma. This ain't how this works. So they go to court. They're at court. And then Greg Hardy, Adrian Peterson, basically one member of each team in the NFL has a problem and goes on the exempt list. I'm going to deal with all you guys in the offseason. I, I have too much to do right now. No, he, he doesn't because he has other people doing it. So he's getting $40 million to basically do nothing, which is fantastic. I'll take $4 million and I'll do more than he does. Let's just make that deal right now. Um, so, of course... Um, all the, all the, uh, the reporters, not reporters, the, 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 the law bigwigs who were looking at the AP thing in Texas and Rusty Harden, AP's lawyer said, we're going to trial and he's going to win because Texas is completely different. The South is completely different in Iowa and Minnesota. You're not going to beat your kid with a switch in Texas. It's common practice. In fact, I have read stories that jurors, because they were going to jury, jurors had been selected, and some were kicked off because they uh, they do not oppose beating with switches. You will never find that person in Minnesota who does not oppose that. So it's a cultural problem. Um, Rusty Harden, they said, is going to win in a landslide. It's not even close, and it doesn't matter if it's actually wrong. He's that much better than the prosecutor. And that the culture, where the where the court case is going to be held, um, it's common practice. So it's going to be a win. And the prosecution ends up agreeing to that, essentially, because of the plea deal. So they work on a plea deal. Because Adrian Peterson, all he wants to do is go back to play football. That's all he cares about. Um, and when you know it, oh my God, we're hearing there's going to be a plea deal. But Rusty Harden said no plea deal. Well, lawyers lie. And it might come down tomorrow. Guess what you no longer have, Roger? Time to figure shit out. Weird how that happens. I can't tell you how many times as a business owner, I've thought I have a lot of time. And miraculously, that's never the case. Ever. Ever. Sometimes I think I have an hour. Five minutes later, I'm like, oh, nope. No longer have that hour. Sometimes I think I have a week. Nope. It happens later that afternoon. That's always how it's going to work. So, Roger and his infinite wisdom, the plea deal comes down. And he's got to wait. He's got to figure out what this plea deal is going to be. Let's be honest. AP's lawyer told the NFL what the plea deal was. He's not dumb. He's a smart guy. That's why he makes millions of dollars from star athletes. So, they do that. They tell him. And it's a no contest. He did not plead guilty. He does, he does not plead guilty. He has a misdemeanor on his record temporarily. It's only like in pencil. So it's going to be erased at some point. So what does he do? He doesn't activate him, even though the fucking sheet they signed says you got to activate him. He needs more time to think about it. Three days. Three days after the plea agreement is signed... He officially requests information on the, the, the issue. You got to be kidding me. Because you couldn't do that during the process? If AP is going to work with you, you think he won't provide what his attorney's got? You don't think they can sign confidentiality agreements? Non-disclosures? I fucking sign those all the time. I hate them. And they're easy to break. But I think the NFL would go completely under from a PR standpoint if they broke that. So they request information. Of course, some of it, because it's a four-year-old, is sealed and not to be released. But they didn't go to court. They didn't even have the first session. So there isn't really much there. And it's very cut and dry. Everyone already knows what it is. So they give them information. But it's just surface information. Because let's be honest, that's all there is. There, There was no discovery period. Sorry, I'm yelling. I'm very impassioned about this. I can tell. Um, and then Roger Goodell, in his infinite wisdom, says, AP, I want to have a meeting with you. It's now been a week, and you've officially filed a grievance like, why am I not activated? This is stupid. I want to have a meeting with you. I'm gonna ha- And AP's like, I'll meet with you. I'll do whatever you want. 
because he'd actually been requesting to meet with Roger. Think about this. AP has been saying, Commissioner, can I come see you so I can get back to the field? We don't know this because he's he's doing it the right way, not through the media, behind the scenes. So Roger says, AP, let's meet. Let's meet Friday, basically the, the last business day before your actual um, meeting with the arbitrator because I didn't do my job. And... By the way, I'm going to have a bunch of experts in the room who are going to help me determine your actual guilt because I don't necessarily agree with the court case. That's fine. I don't care if you don't agree. Adrian Peterson says yes. Then he tells the union about it, and the union's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Who are these, who are these people? So they request information. Who are these experts? Guess who doesn't respond? Roger, why would I want to give you information? They're experts in the field that I need to study AP on. They request for three straight days information on these. They don't get zip. On the last day, they say, you can't just bring random experts without telling the union about it. This is beyond the scope of the CBA. No, we're not going to meet. So Roger, again, genius, says, well, I'll come in on Saturday. Do you want to meet on Saturday? And the union's like, are you going to tell us about these experts? Give us maybe... Their credentials, tell us who they are. Maybe we could ask them some questions because you know this is not involved in the CBA, so this would be extracurricular. Again, no response. So guess who doesn't get to the meeting? Instead, the NFL leaks that they scheduled a meeting that AP didn't show up for. Way to go, NFL. Way to smear your basically your own brand. Then we get to Monday. The arbitrator case. It goes on. Great. Roger Goodell has to see that victory is not coming. Okay? So he wakes up on Tuesday morning and suspends him indefinitely. Essentially. Essentially. He put a date in there, but he said at least to April 15th, and then we'll talk. That is ridiculous. You have players who are suspended for four games for things that actually affect the play on the field. This is in the privacy of a, in his home, in the off season, when he's not obligated to be a Viking. How in the hell can you have a CBA that reaches into your home when you are doing private things? And yes, I understand domestic abuse and things like that, but at this time, there's no charge. Nothing. That's scary that they can now dictate what you do in your privacy of your own home. Your own home. Um, and then he says, you know, we'll talk about it on April 15th. April 15th, he could, he, he might as well pick June 1st. Who the F cares? Because at that point, free agency is basically over. The trading period is over. You already have your starting running back or you're well into the draft and you know who you're going to pick. So the chances of the Vikings unloading him is zero. So the Vikings would have to make a decision prior to that on releasing him. So you have a guy who is on his way to first ballot Hall of Fame, breaking almost every record known to man, not showing slowing down, even even made cases for you on great NFL play and model citizen, and you just threw him to the trash. The one time he made, makes a mistake. He's made other mistakes, but this is really the major mistake. <clears throat> And then later Tuesday, because this isn't dumb enough, another bombshell comes out. The arbitrator rules for Roger Goodell. You heard that, right? I did. Did you hear why? I did not. This is the... I I continue to be surrounded in my brain by dumb. Okay? In there they said that yes, the letter that was signed does dictate that the exemption list ends the moment his legalities are resolved. But the reason this stupid arbitrator ruled for the NFL was because it did not specifically list how things happen afterwards. So because it didn't specifically say the next day what happens, then that becomes a part of the CBA where Roger has 100% authority. 
So what is the use of putting that piece of paper together saying I'll be released? But because it doesn't say when, because it doesn't say the next day or the minute later, you win. That is asinine. You can't tell me it's not clear enough that when it says when my legalities are resolved, I'll be put on the active list. (laughs) I guess it could be three years from now. That's when that's possible. That's literally why. Do you not think that's dumb? Yep. So, now, now, they're obviously appealing, which they have to do. But here's the, here, here becomes the much larger problem. We have the AP issue, but it is no longer an AP issue. It is a union and employer issue. And AP is stuck in the middle because Roger Goodell has shown that he is an, a power monger <clears throat> who made some mistakes and to show that he's over those mistakes goes completely to the other side of the coin and does, he, he makes it even worse. Instead of just correcting, you overcorrects in the exact opposite way. The union who has to protect the players says, you realize that you have now set a precedent that at any point you can just suspend someone indefinitely because you decided so. That's what this means. Because under all the guidelines of the CBA, there are specific rules on when he can when he can do this. The personal conduct policy that was new, that technically was not bargained into the CBA... Uh, is very, also very specific, which he has passed all of them. All of them. We have people who have murdered teammates, murdered teammates, who have had less suspension and are currently playing. That is insane. Insane. Do you have something to say? Are we done? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So now we're going to have this huge legal battle because Demora Smith, the players' union representative, uh, chairman, I don't know what his position is. He's the president, I guess. Uh, he said that he's not against taking this to federal court, which is what he's going to have to do because the union is stupid enough to not bargain this in the CBA to begin with and because they can't allow this precedent. Meanwhile, Roger Goodell is not going to change his mind because he already fucking went all the way. You go all the way, you're going to continue. You don't. Pardon my vulgar, vul, vulgarness. You don't stick your penis in her and then decide, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Nope, you continue on. It's too late now. You pass the point of no return, you're in hell. You just keep trunging through. It's too late, the door behind you closed. You think entering a woman's vagina is hell and you keep talking about lovely men. I think. <laughs> uh, no. There's the bun I love. So I'm I'm mad about this because it makes other businesses look stupid when there are so many points during this process that it can be easily resolved and AP gets to go back on the field. Does he play for the Vikings next year? I don't know. But he would at least play, f- play football. The only thing I can hope now is that the Vikings do what basically he did for them. Stand by. He never asked for a trade. He signed an extension. You sucked as a team. You still suck as a team. Stand by him. Just keep him on the exempt list. Pretend he doesn't exist. Then when he's get when he comes back, tell him you want to make a new deal with him on his contract. He'll do it. I guarantee it. But if he never plays again for the Vikings, I also question if he'll never play in the NFL again. He is... So close to never playing in the NFL again, which is the saddest part of this. I mean, outside of the kid, obviously. I think we separated that, right? I wasn't going to comment. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed my... I suddenly look away like, wait a minute. Am I going to jump on this or... Well, if if you didn't, the, the three people who listened to it would have screamed it at their computer. Yep. Um, that's terrible. Nope. It's terrible. 
I'm off my soapbox now. I've been waiting all day to. I talk was about, about to this. say, do you feel better now that you've gotten it off your chest? I don't. I don't. I want to drive to New York and punch Roger in the face and say, as a fellow business owner, you make me look stupid. <sighs> okay, Let, let's be honest. There is no reason we spend any part of this podcast talking about next week's game, <laughs> except that it's going to be really cold because. And terrible. You realize that, right? Could there be an offense that is no. hitting on more cylinders? No. Greg Jennings is probably like, I don't even fit in that offense anymore. They got too many weapons. I got nothing. Yeah, this is going to be a very terrible, terrible game, and I'm going to hate it. I'm going to say something that you're going to laugh at. but get You're not going to predict. Nope, 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 no, no. <laughs> but I'm going to say something you're going to laugh at, but also be extremely depressed about. Okay. I feel like, yes, there's a, a sliver of me that thinks maybe the Packers will be too confident and they'll mess up. And the Vikings, they have to lose at some point. Why not to the Minnesota Vikings? Because that's usually how it works. The shitty team beats the good team randomly. And then that good team wins the Super Bowl, which would make me cry. Um, but what I'm really going to say is I honestly feel like they're going to take the field, the Green Bay offense. Aaron Rodgers is going to, because he's got the 40-second play clock, he's going to say, hold on, he's going to go to the shotgun, he's going to pull out a blindfold from his pocket, put it around his face mask, and play the entire game that way. You laugh, and you're depressed at the same time. <sighs> he's that kind of quarterback right now. that He, he doesn't care. Yeah, He calls the play, and he I bet he hits those plays. It's, it's stupid. I don't understand. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So Next week list. will be another depressing podcast. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be depressing. Sliver of hope. All right. See you guys.